going live. Five, four, Good morning and aloha. aloha. I'd like to welcome everyone here to this morning's worship service and also Happy New Year's Eve. My name is Haley Pactool and I'll be assisting our guest pastor, Jade Moore Jarvin. We would like to welcome all new visitors who decided to join us for today's worship service. We would also like to thank Vicki Jamora for the beautiful altar flowers. Now for the gathering music by Edwin Hermones. Your father, when the answer goes beyond what 
that play, we had a song that was sung. It was titled, What Makes a Christmas Morn? Morning. And it was sung by Erica and Casey and danced by our two girls, uh, Ella and JC. And we'd like to do that for you this morning to usher in the new year with the message of joy. So, Ella and JC. It's time for our Ohana prayer, and I did receive a little note of some prayer concerns that I can pray for at this time, but I would like to ask if there are more. If you've written something down, please pass it up, or if you're bold enough and you have a prayer request for yourself, for your family, or for this church, would you just... Uh, let us know right now and let me lift it up to the Lord in prayer. So anybody on 
on this side with a prayer request. Don't be shy. Yes, ma'am. For Peter, and he's recovering now from from an injury. Okay, we thank God for his recovery. Thank you. Someone else over here? I heard it said, and it has stuck with me always, that when we don't understand what God is doing or what's going on around us, when we don't understand, we should just stand under. Understanding, we, we don't always have that understanding, but we can always submit to God's love and care. He, he wants the best for us. He knows much more than we do about our situation. So we just bow the knee, like we said. We stand under. When we don't understand, we stand under. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, it's a privilege to be here with our church family and especially to enjoy the young people worshiping you and leading us in worship. We pray for everyone, everyone here and everyone loved by the people that are here. Especially these three, first of all, Peter, who went through a kind of a scary time and some pain, but he's recovering now, and we know that you're the healer. Thank you. We put him under your healing power. We also want to pray for Carrie Dad and Caroline. For Carrie Dad, that she'll be able to be discharged from rehab on January 4th, very soon. That she'll be able to come home and be able to walk with ease and, uh, and without pain. We also pray for Caroline, that she'll have the, the health and the the strength to take care of Caridad, make her healthy and strong in her mercy for, is it her sister? Lord, you know. You know what's going on in that rehab center. You know what's going on in their home. You know what's going on in their hearts, as you do for all of us. We lift our prayers, our love, and our loyalty to you in Jesus' name. Today's scripture lesson comes from the Old Testament, book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. I know the plans I have in mind for you, declares the Lord. They are plans for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. This is the word of God. short weeks, first and last Sundays of this month, and uh, I enjoyed being here last time, and I'm sure happy to be here on Youth, Youth and Children's Sunday. That's where my heart is. Last time I came here, there were some visitors. I wonder if there are any, are any of you visitors this morning? Would you just indicate to me? No, oh, this is this is family. But I met a young couple, Paul Howley's from Canada, who had when I was here last time, who had just completed their skydive. 
at Dillingham Field over there in Mokolehia. And I said, what, you, had, you went on skydiving this morning and now you're right here at church? And they said, yeah, we survived. <laughs> and, we, and we thought we better go to church. And, and thank God, you know, you know that, we, that we made it through. <laughs> I said, well, that's great. Is this the, the nearest church to Dillingham Field? Maybe. You know, in my imagination, it kind of suggests a, a little outreach project that you guys could do. Why, why don't you? Uh, this is ridiculous, but, but paint a message on your roof <laughs> that the skydivers can see when, when they jump out of the plane. I have done it, and that is the scariest, the scariest moment because you have to step out of the security of the cabin of the airplane onto a tiny little metal step, hold on to the strut that's underneath the wing, and then your tandem guide steps up behind you. You're strapped in with someone who really knows what they're doing. You don't, you don't know, you just, just have to trust. And then the, my, my instructor said, let go. <laughs> so I let go. He said, lift up your feet. <laughs> I lifted up my feet. I was kind of in this fetal position, you know. My heart was just pounding. He said, count to three and here we go. I go, one, two, three. He took off a little early. He didn't want to. Didn't want me to get to the number three. I guess I don't know what. But we were in free fall for one whole minute, and I I remember him saying to me, uh, "Look up and tell me what is the color of our airplane's tail." So I looked back. Orange. I told him it's orange. He said. Good, keep them open. You know what he's saying? He, was, he, he told me later that half the people that take a skydive keep their eyes tightly shut and never really enjoy themselves. It's just, it's just too scary. But with my eyes wide open and able to, for 60 seconds, just kind of coast on the air, I was a great, great experience. So bring them in, folks. Put a message on your roof that is a message to the skydivers when they're falling down from 13,000 feet. I suggest, I suggest something like, you want adventure? Follow Jesus. Or, um, who do you thank? Come join us for worship. For right? For Jesus saves. Jesus saves. That's the best. That's really good. Any other suggestions? Now, of course you're not going to do this. That's just silly. But you know what? When we meet people at critical times, at crossroads times in their lives, this is the best time to share the meaning and the joy that we have in knowing Jesus. And that's why... I wanted to take for my theme on this last Sunday of the year, as we kind of lean into 2024, I, I wanted to take uh, the theme of God's Plan A. It's already been read. It was our Old Testament lesson, and I wouldn't doubt if this is the most read scripture on this particular day in all the churches across the world. Because in the Old Testament, Jeremiah says, and I quote, uh, he is speaking for God. I know the plans I have in mind for you. They are plans for peace, not disaster, to give you a future filled with hope. This is God's plan. 
I don't trust my own plans or my best friends or people in this world. I don't know what is going to happen in 2024. Our world is kind of bust up right now. Think about Gaza and, and think about Ukraine. And think about what that shock of this last year over in Lahaina. Think about Ill illnesses like Carrie Dad's illness. Um, we just, we, we make plans, but very often our, our plans go nowhere except into disaster and hopelessness. But God says, I have a plan for each one of us. Plan for a future and a hope. And I would say God's plan A, the one who embraces everything about the future and every hope that we could ever have is Jesus. Jesus is God's plan A. That's, that's the takeaway from this morning and what I've been thinking about and praying about all week. I've also been reading daily um, the devotions that you folks collected and put together and bound together in this Advent booklet. Merry Christmas to you all. And I especially want to thank Orlan. Yeah. For the folks at home, can you get a close-up of that? Thank you, Chance. Thank you, Chase for that picture, especially the shades on the sun, the sunglasses on the sun. And you said Jesus' birth gives us eternal life and he is the greatest gift. That's why I love Christmas. And I think it bears repeating. Please repeat after me. Jesus' birth gives us eternal life. He is the greatest gift. That's why we love Christmas. Ch Chase, are you here? That's you. Oh, thank you, Chase. Thank you, Chase. And the other one, the other picture in this book, which I love, is from Ella. Ella Garcia. Ella says, I am thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for Jesus' birth because he loves me so much that he died for me. Thank you, Ella. We're all going to say your words this morning. Everybody? I am thankful for Jesus' birth because he loves me so much that he died for me. That um, is about all I want to say. Jesus is God's plan A. There ain't no plan B. Jesus is everything, as you children reminded us. His gift of eternal life, He's the, and he himself is the best gift. His birth and his death mean life to us. It was God's plan from eternity carried out to perfection. And we get to benefit and participate in it. Jesus is God's plan and he's sticking to it. You know John 3.16, for God so loved the world. If, if you know it, say it with me. I'll, we'll try and say it even if the words are slightly different. Go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 And, hold on, put it in my phone so I have it right here for me to read. 
I want to add the 17th verse. We just repeated 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him won't perish but will have eternal life. God didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. That's the plan. God is not our judge. Well, in a sense he is, but he's the merciful judge who loves us from eternity to eternity. And Jesus was not sent into the world to scold the world or to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. It moves me. There's nothing that happens in this world and nothing that could ever happen in, in our lives that can foil God's plan A of Jesus' love and Jesus' salvation for us. Not any health problems, not any natural disasters, not any political traumas, I don't know what's going to happen in 2024, but you know what? Uh, I'm living by a much better plan, a much higher plan than the most important election in our lifetime. Don't we hear that every single time, every single year? Oh. We put so much emotion and energy into our plans and the plans of our, of our leaders, the leaders we like, the leaders we don't like. But you know, there's only one plan that finally matters and makes a difference. This church has had its own trauma with your pastor, with your pastor search. And I hear there's a rich, rich pastor, someone to, to tie together the interim between the last pastor you had and the next full-time pastor that you're going to get. And I pray that the right person comes and I pray that the interim pastor is loving and patient and kind and gives you confidence to keep going as a church family. But please remember, um, the right path, the pastor who stays a long time, the pastor who stays a short time, the Anything that goes on in the world, even in the church, and even in our own individual lives, any kind of personal catastrophe, it doesn't change God's plan A. There is no plan B. I, I had a personal failure when I was in ministry in 1984, up in Milani, and I had to resign. I had to resign in a way that, well, it was because of a divorce. I, I divorced when I was a pastor of UCC Church. Uh, I don't know if anybody ever heard the name, the church at our house, but Gerald Chenet, my good buddy, who sometimes comes here and, and shares with you, he and I started a church in 1980. God was blessing, things were going well, and I went right off the rails. I sinned, I fell. And I failed. Uh, I collapsed, and my life was in shambles. I had to go and hide out in Japan for 10 years, kind of a self-imposed exile. I, I, I'm just telling you about my stupid plans and the way I damaged my friendships and especially my family and my own children. I'm so ashamed and I have so many regrets about it. I thought that I was planning for a happier and better life, but I look back and I was so wrong. I was so wrong. I don't want to get into any of the details of all that, only to say that I asked God, can I have a plan B? I just blew it. I just ruined all of your plan A for my life. 
And God has convinced me since then by being restored to fellowship and, and ministry, by being given an opportunity to reach out to children in the elementary schools. God, God has completely restored me by His power and His planning the salvation that I have in Jesus Christ and the eternal life that you and I will all share. Folks, there is only one plan, and that plan is Jesus. Um, now I try to look at everything in my life as a part of God's plan A. It's hard sometimes because as I get older, I just um, make so many mistakes. Last, no, two weeks ago, this, this actually happened. I was doing my Christmas letter and I had gone and bought the most expensive stationery that's part paper and part cloth and it's like parchment and it's for resumes and it's for the most important letters that you'll ever write. And I was going to send to all my friends and loved ones a, a, a nice Christmas letter like I usually do. And I had the full ream of this beautiful paper that I was going to take down uh, to Long's and copy some photographs to include. And I put the 500 sheets of paper on the top of my car and back down the, the steep driveway and took off for Long's Drugs in Pearl Ridge Shopping Center. And, and then, only when I arrived at Long's, I realized what I had done. So I backtracked, but by that time, it was one of those windy days. Was it windy where you live? Did you remember, remember how windy it was? How far do you think 500 sheets of paper can fly in that wind? And one of the things I hate is litter and rubbish. And there were my 500 sheets of paper all over three lanes of active traffic. So I stopped my car and dodging all the other drivers, I was out there scrambling around, picking up the sheets of paper, and then I looked her up over my shoulder, and guess what? Six other cars, strangers, had stopped, and they were all out there risking their lives to help me pick up those 500 sheets of paper. I thanked them so much. I said, hey, can you stick around? Let's go over. Big City Diner, I'd like to buy you some coffee, I'd like to thank you. No, no, we're busy. Of course, we're all busy at that, uh, at that time of year, right? But they weren't too busy to help this old man, this, you know, this guy that was littering all over in front of Polly, Polly Mommy. I love them for that, and I don't understand why I'm getting so forgetful. But when something happens, when anything happens, and we don't understand what, we stand under God and under God's plan. And God sent me those good Samaritans to help this red-faced idiot that, that had scattered all that paper everywhere. Will you join me? Join me in turning from our own plans and our own confusion and our own lack of understanding and play and standing under Jesus, God's plan A, who loves us and gave himself for us and will give us an eternity with him. Let's pray. Shall we pray? Jesus. It's so hard to find the words uh, that express our adoration of you and our surprise at how gracious you are in spite of our sins and shortcomings, in spite of the mess that we make in our lives, 
then we clamor for a plan B. Can you just forgive me a little bit? Just give me a little taste of eternity. And then you remind us there's only one plan. And that plan is abundant life in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Pastor, for that message, and thank you, Brooke, for that wonderful hula. Now it's time to give thanks to God. Will the usher please come forward for this wonderful offering? Thanksgiving offering to the Provacho Scholarship Fund from Jason, Brooke, Riley, and Jason. Thank you. Dear generous God, we know that it all comes from you, even these blessings that have just been read. And I thank you that we have an opportunity to be generous with that which has overflowed into our lives from you. We give it to you and your work in Jesus' name. Amen. For today's announcements, we'd like to thank you, Pastor Jay Darwin, for joining us and sharing the Word of God today. Wednesday Bible studies are on break and will resume in January. Thank you to all who donated to the Giving Tree. Donations will be given to the Institute for Human Services and the UCC Transition House for Women. Also, please remember to submit your receipts for 2023 today if you haven't already done so. Council and committee chairs, please begin working on your annual reports as they will be due soon. Also, if you would like to take one of the Pontianas home, take the ones from the pews and the ones in the front are currently reserved. So after service, if you would like to take one home, grab the ones in between the pews. For calendar of events, today, December 31st, there is a property team meeting. Tuesday, January 2nd, Tuesday market line will be closed and will resume on January 9th. Sunday, January 7th, Altar Flowers will be from Chris and Andres, and the worship leader will be Pat Pedro. Sunday, January 14th, will be a finance meeting, and Sunday, January 21st, there will be a council meeting. Are there any other announcements? I'm sorry to pull off the service, but I have to share this because um, Dave, myself, Dale, and Marie, we got together on Friday to, if you can see the under the tree, it's empty now. We um, divided your donations to the um, Institute for IHS. I forgot my knees, my kids. <laughs> and then also to the transition house. and. Both places were very, very, very blessed by your giving. They couldn't believe what um, was shared with them. And especially for the, uh, the UCC Transition House, if you're not sure what that is, it's for um, families uh, that are needing a place to stay because of certain situations that they're experiencing. And for this particular um, Christmas, uh, time, there was a little girl, a three-year-old, I believe, two or three-year-old, that was so happy to receive um, dolls, Barbie dolls for Christmas, because somebody donated Barbie dolls. And so you don't know how your giving will touch people. Um, and so thank you guys very much for your donations um, to the Giving Tree. And then also, Haley, like Haley said, you're very welcome to receive the Ponsea um, plants 
with um, and if you feel um, you know moved to uh, give a donation for them, thank you. Are there any other announcements? Okay, um, <clears throat> regarding the uh, Bible study, it's going to be January tomorrow. <laughs> so, anyway, let's, not, let's take a break one more week. <laughs> if you accept that, you know, we just take one more week of break and then second week of January, let's start again and we'll see where we are and we can decide how we want to go on from there. From there. So, so let's take one more week of break and we'll see maybe the, mid, the second week again. Let's, let's get together and maybe just have a little party or something. <laughs> okay. Anyone else? If you're able, please rise for our closing turn to one another and wish each other a happy new year and say this say you are part of God's plan A please do that dear God lead us out into hope and into our future with your blessing and your strength. In Jesus we go. In plan A we go. Amen. Amen.